A big thanks to designmybeat.com for sponsoring this video. They have a huge selection of sample-based software instruments and drum and beat sample packs inspired by real artists like Martin Garrix, Hardwell, Skrillex, Tiesto, Calvin Harris, and more. Check out Tomorrowland Elixir of EDM and their newest instrument, Tomorrowland 2 Elixir of Stars, which contains more than 10,000 sample instruments, sound effects, and drums. Check out the links in the video description below for more info. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome back uh, for another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today, I want to show you guys the drum probability sequencer in Logic. So this is actually a preset in the Scripter MIDI effects plugin in Logic. So if you don't know where to load those, you just uh, select a software instrument, go down to your MIDI effects right here in green, add the Scripter, and then select the drum probability sequencer from the drop-down menu. Now this says it's a drum probability sequencer, but it doesn't have to be used just for drums, uh, as I'll demonstrate in this video. So what this does is, it's not a random music generator, but it's more like a controlled uh, probability or controlled random sequencer. What this does is it allows you to select four different voices or notes, and you can um, tr uh, create pattern, drum patterns, and you can set the probability of each of those four notes being triggered at any given point in time in a 16-step sequence. Now, when you open this thing up, it looks like this, uh, but you can expand it all the way to the right so you can see all four of your voices. They're kind of uh, ordered a little weird, um, although the weird thing is you can't adjust this vertically. You can only adjust it horizontally, but at least I can see all the controls here. First, let me show you what this can do. I, I don't have any MIDI region on my uh, drum instrument here. It's not an ultra beat instrument. There's no pattern that's pre-programmed into the plugin. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll just bypass this press play, and you hear nothing, right? So if I turn this back on, watch what happens. That drum sequence has been completely created by the probability sequencer here. So like I said before, what this does is it allows you to use four notes, four voices, um, for now, I'm going to turn off voice two, three, and four. So I just have voice number one. Voice number one right now is set to C1, which on most drum kits, is gonna be your kick drum. So this is controlling the kick drum right now. Now, what this does is, it, like I said, it, it controls the probability of a sequence across 16 steps. So you see voice one, uh, step one, all the way down to voice one, step 16. So each slider controls the probability of a particular note being triggered. So if I put these all down at zero, we're going to get nothing, right? So we have no sound at all. But if I pull this one up to 100%, now on step one, I get a kick every time. 100% of the time. So that's the probability part. So think of each of these steps as a 16th note within a measure of 4-4 four, four time. So if I put this on 1, 5, 9, and 13, essentially I'm going to get a 4 on the floor pattern. But if I pull down one of the steps, say around 50%, that second step is going to come in half of the time, and half of the time it's not going to come in. So there's a 53% probability that this step on this note on step five will come in. Now you notice that the volume was also uh, reduced um, when that one came in. That's because I have this velocity follows option on step level. If you set this to slider, um, it just goes off of this velocity slider here. So if I set this to 127, all of these are always going to be 127 regardless of what their probability is. If you set this to step level, then the sliders, uh, the step sliders control both the velocity and the probability of the note. So let's create a bit of a little pattern here. I'll just pull in some of these notes. Let's try that.
And you can also swing this as well. You can add swing to uh, the whole thing. So if you set this to like 66%, you'll get a swung eighth note sort of groove. Or swung 16th, rather. Let's pull in the uh, snare drum. Um, so this defaults to D1. So D1 is a snare. E1 is also a snare on this kit, but uh, D sharp one is a clap. So I'm going to actually set this to D sharp one as a clap instead. Now G sharp one is sort of a hi-hat sound, and then F sharp one is another hi-hat sound. All these other ones I have it on step level, but for uh, F sharp one I have it on slider. So you can play around with this as much as you like, uh, set the probability for each of the four voices, set the swing. I set this back down to 50% because uh, I want it to be a, a straight groove. So that's one thing you can do with drums, and that, that's pretty cool. Uh, but you can actually use this on instruments as well. So let me just mute this for now. Let's go down here. I just have a sculpture instrument up here. This is typically going to work better with more uh, percussive sounds like this. Uh, uh, keys and pianos and electric pianos like you're not going to want to use this with like synth pads It's just not going to turn out so something that has a pretty strong front-end attack I'm also going to pull the voice count up to maximum as well And then what I'll do is load up the scripter and now I can use this to trigger four notes within my sculpture instrument or whatever software instrument you like so instead of choosing notes that are specific samples in the drum kit, I'm picking notes that are sort of within a set key. So I have C2, D sharp two, which is like E flat, uh, A sharp one, which is B flat, and then F2. So I'm kind of sticking to C minor here. So let's see what this sounds like now. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, right? So what I can do is I can pair this uh, probability sequencer with the arpeggiator, and also I can use the chord trigger as well to trigger more notes than just these four notes here. So I'm actually going to start with the chord trigger first. So I'm going to load the chord trigger right after the scripter, and if you let this play, you'll see the trigger keys that the script uh, the scripter is triggering right there. So I'm going to put this on multi-mode, click learn, and I'm going to create a chord for each one of these notes uh, that's being triggered by the scripter. So I'll do like a big C minor chord, then maybe a big E flat major chord, and then there was a B flat too. Do a B flat chord here. And then we've got, uh, it was F was the last one. There we go. And this one I put on the wrong note here. Let's put it on E flat instead. There we go. Okay, so I've got C minor, E flat major, B flat major, F major. I can turn off learn. And now what's going to happen is the scripter plugin is going to trigger all four of those chords rather than just individual notes. Still not too pretty, but let's throw the arpeggiator on here to break up those chords. When you use the arpeggiator this way, you want to make sure that latch mode is on. And the reason why you want latch on is it's going to continue to arpeggiate rather than restarting the arpeggiator at the beginning of, of every new note. Because otherwise, then you're just going to hear the bottom note of, of each chord. Um, and then you can play around with the different uh, directions, the different variations, and octaves as well.
Now on top of that, we can trigger some more notes by adding a delay. So on my effects send here, I have a bus with the delay designer plugin in it. And one of the cool things about the delay designer is in addition to, be able to uh, being able to control the level of each of the delays, each of the echoes in the plugin, you can also transpose um, each tap, as they're called, each echo. So I've got one going up an octave and one going down uh, five semitones, which is a, a perfect fourth. Now, sometimes when you use um, all three of these MIDI effects plugins together, the uh, arpeggiation will just continue going and going. So you may find yourself manually turning this on and turning this off. And of course, you can bring your drum pattern back in as well. So there you go, that's how you can use the drum probability sequencer preset within the Scripter MIDI effects plugin to generate probability sequenced music. I don't really wanna call it random music because there's still parameters for the randomness, but as you can see, we're triggering notes without any MIDI regions whatsoever. We're not playing any notes or any chords. We're just setting a series of parameters within our MIDI effects plugins and our audio effects plugins to generate uh, the sound. And then you can go back in while it's playing and and tweak the, the pattern and tweak the sequence and tweak your effects on the fly to create some pretty cool sequences. So again, it's not gonna be super useful to everyone. I just thought it was a really cool thing that you could do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can check me out on patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. As always, Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.